Welcome to Your Family's Health. This is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the Department of Nursing here at NASA Community College. Your Family's Health is a show that focuses on health care issues and resources available here in Nassau County. On the show, we will speak to experts from around the country to keep you up to date on health care issues and trends. Today, we are speaking to Natasha Simone Alexenko about her book, A Survivor's Journey from Victim to Advocate. So if you want to know more about how to stay healthy in NASA County, stay tuned for the next half hour to the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. So welcome to the show, Natasha. Can I call you Natasha? Absolutely. Please do. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So tell us a little bit about your story. Tell us what brought you to this point. Well, I'm happy to share my story, um, and certainly um, it's not easy, so I do um, want to warn your listeners a little bit um, that uh, there are resources out there, um, particularly rain.org, um, if something I say is something that perhaps triggers some emotions for them as well. Um, I was raped and robbed at gunpoint in 1993 in New York City. I grew up in Canada, and my dream since I could remember was to go to New York City to go to college. Something I don't ever remember a time in my life where that wasn't my goal, um, to go to Manhattan. So I was really, really fortunate um, to attend (coughs) university in Manhattan. Um, I felt really great in my community, West 95th and and, uh, Riverside Drive. I enjoyed my neighborhood. I enjoyed my life. Um, I recall it being probably one of the most happiest times of my life. Um, you know, and I I uh, worked at a veterinary clinic while I was attending university, and um, I had just returned from a shift at the animal hospital where a colleague and I afterwards kind of did the whole, let's just vent about our day of, of cleaning up after animals type thing. And um, as I returned to my apartment, like I did so many other times, um, there was a man behind me holding a gun and I wish I could tell you where he came from or or which direction he came out of but it's one of those things that it just happened like he appeared out of nowhere so he was holding a gun to me I had never seen a gun before Um, he showed me the inside of the gun Um, he showed me the bullets in the gun and assured me that if I didn't cooperate with him that he would blow my brains out um certainly I was frightened but it's interesting and I think so many people who've been through just a traumatic experience like that can attest to your brain just does something really interesting with time um you know your your body releases chemicals so the way time moved, um, the way I was able to respond is something I couldn't sit here now and tell you I was able to do. But I, I really wanted to cooperate and I wanted to do whatever I could to stay alive. Um, I really didn't think that I was going to be raped. I thought that perhaps I would be robbed. He assured me that he just wanted a safe place, um, that he was running from the police and he needed a place where he could stay and be safe. Uh, He asked me if I had roommates um, in my apartment unit. And at the time, I had two roommates and two dogs. And again, with that time being strange in that moment, I immediately envisioned us going into the apartment and him just shooting everyone and me in the apartment. So I did tell him that that was the case. He then asked me if there was a roof to my building. I indicated there was and while he held the gun to my head and and varied between being really angry and just kind of being like, all right, just do as I say, you know, um, he led me up um, to the rooftop, which was locked. So there was like a rooftop landing where some of the tenants in my building held their bicycles. And um, he told me to remove my clothing. And, and still at this point, I'm not thinking of rape. I don't know if it was a defense mechanism or if I just naively thought that um he removed all of my jewelry he took any money i had out of my pockets and then he proceeded to rape me um 
I went between sobbing and just being quiet because at that moment, I really thought I was going to die. Um, I thought that for certain this would be the end of my life. And so I wanted to make certain I, I cooperated in any way I could. Um, so when the assault occurred, were you in the park or were you in the apartment? I was in the building on the on the rooftop the and the landing. It's a, it was like just a platform before you would get onto the roof. Unfortunately, the uh, or you know for or fortunately, the the door to, that led to the roof um, was locked. Um, it had a huge um, chain and bolt around it, so he couldn't take me out into the roof. So the only option was this little platform. Mm-hmm. Um, that led um, out to the rooftop. So he met you in the hallway of your apartment, or was it? How did he meet? What it, did he, it was outside of my building. It was outside yeah, of the building, just as I was entering, and I had no idea where he came from. Um, mm-hmm. And then he just led me inside, um, you know. And um, because we, you know, he we weren't able to go to my actual unit. The only option he felt um, was was a roof. And was this during the day, or was this more the evening hours that this happened? It was probably around eleven thirty in the evening. Um, you know, something I'd been out later. I'd right. been out earlier. Yes. I mean, it was just um, it was just like a monster appeared out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. was like he apparated somehow. Um, and you know at that point you're you're fighting for your life perhaps not physically but you know your brain is is kind of controlling you at that point and and trying to do everything you can to not you know shake up the monster and and just kind of um let let him do whatever he wants in right. order to survive so tell me after after you were assaulted violently um, by this individual Um, What did you immediately do after the assault? Did you go to your apartment? Did you call the police? What was your next move? Well, well, I think, and this is important too, you know, I'd never thought in my life I'd be assaulted, so I really didn't know what to do afterwards. Um, I ended up in my apartment building. It's all a big blur. My roommates at the time have told me I let out a a scream and indicated that something horrible had happened. They called 911. Um, My female roommate had insisted I go get a rape kit done. And that was something I, I just didn't even know what that was because I wanted to take a shower. I wanted to forget about it. I wanted to take a hot shower and just go on with my life. And she insisted that I go for a rape, rape kit exam um, because we needed to make certain that we put this p- perpetrator away, that we found him, that he wouldn't be out harming other people. So against <laughs> what I really wanted, which was a shower, we went to the hospital. Oh, thank God. Yeah, and thank goodness we did. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I waited in the waiting room for about two hours. And, you know, I felt like I had a sign in my head that said I was just raped. Mm. Um, and then, of course, my body was a crime scene. All of the evidence from that horrible crime committed against me was on me and in me. And um, this amazing sexual assault nurse examiner really treated me with a, a lot of respect. But that's not to say it was an easy process. You have to recall in great detail everything that happened. Um, you have to recognize where they where there may be DNA evidence on your body so that the sexual assault nurse examiner or SANE can, you know, Take swabs, um, cut your fingernails, uh, pull pubic hairs. It's it's very invasive. Wow. Yes. So they they do all of this. They take samples of your pubic hair, your nails. Um, I'm sure they're looking for semen, or they just do some kind of uh, swab. Correct. Yes. It's 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 basically like a very invasive gynecological exam. Okay. Anywhere that the perpetrator could have left DNA um, is swabbed. Is you know your clothing is taken because of course that is part of the crime scene. I was so fortunate. My roommates knew to bring an extra um, pair of clo- you know set of clothes for me um so it was it it was a daunting experience yes Yes. how long did it take for your rape kit to be processed my rape kit sat collecting dust for nine and a half years wow um this was um so i was assaulted in 1993 my rape kit did not get tested until 2003 wow it had not made it to a lab. It was sitting in a county storage facility 
along with 17,000 other rape kits. 17,000 rape, other rape kits. Correct, yes. Um, between 2000 and 2003, New York City tested every single one of their rape kits, including mine. They sent them out to private laboratories um, because at that time their medical lab couldn't handle um, that kind of volume. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's something that haunts me because I know my story and I can only imagine what those, you know, 16,999 other individuals went through feeling betrayed, feeling um, like justice just was denied to them. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Justice denied, you you assaulted, and then the process is not taking to a point where you're able to find. Ultimately, was the victim, was the uh, uh, the rapist found? That's the question. Yes. Um, he was found in 2007 and um, through a DNA match. And I have to say, you know, for years I didn't know my rape kit wasn't tested. I, I just had no idea. And I recognize that my experience as a survivor differs from others. I had a decent relationship with law enforcement, so my impression was they were doing everything they could. Mm -hmm. um, I hear from survivors that feel the opposite. We all have different experiences when it comes to law enforcement. I'd had a good one. I had assumed um, everything had, had worked out. It hadn't. Um, I was destroyed by the guilt inside because I felt that the rape kit or the, my perpetrator had not been captured because of something I did wrong. Mm -hmm. I couldn't recognize him. I, his face was such a blur to me that I didn't give an accurate description of what he looked like, so I blamed myself. I would wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat thinking there was a monster on the street and I was at fault for every single crime he was committing in the interim because I wasn't a good eyewitness. I didn't know it was because my rape kit wasn't tested. So how did you, how did you, okay, your rape kiss kit was not tested. So how did you find out that it was processed? In 2003, I received a phone call from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. And, you know, I, I know what I would feel today if that happened. But back in 2003, I didn't know about backlogged rape kits. I didn't know anything about, right. about this. So I was just really relieved um, because I'd spent so many years blaming myself and feeling awful and, and thinking about all the other people he was hurting that I was just grateful. Um, and, and to go from just hating yourself so much, because I did, I hated myself. I was so angry at myself for this to all of a sudden seeing that something you've been blaming yourself for for nearly a decade wasn't your fault um i just felt a lot of gratitude um and you know recognizing that the problem in new york city at the time and again we have this problem throughout the nation today but between 2000 and 2003 new york city had yet to um hook up to codis which is the national dna database mm -hmm. it's similar to like the national fingerprint database except it holds dna yes. um so their rationale for not testing it was that lack of um, connection to CODIS. Um, of course, today, seeing that we still have unprocessed rape kits, we, there's different excuses yeah. um, for that wrongdoing. Um, I was really fortunate that we found in 2007 the man that raped me. In fact, I was I was raped August 6, 1993, and there was a DNA match to CODIS August 6, 2007. So mm. it was like to the day. Um, Wow. And, he, and he was. He was on a nationwide crime spree. He was a walking public safety hazard. He didn't just commit sexual assaults. He committed a variety of crimes. Um, he was never entered into any kind of database. And ironically, he was jaywalking in Las Vegas, assaulted the police officer who gave him a citation. And that's when he was um, swabbed and connected to my rape in 1993. So tell me, how is it, um, after being assaulted uh, the way you were, how do you go back to that apartment? What is it like living, um, not knowing if that uh, person who assaulted you is out in the street, possibly coming back to assault you again or coming back to your apartment? How does that, how do you do